Roger, good day. Citation 327 November. Mike departed. Austin Executive 1600 climbing 3000. Citation 327 November. Mike Austin departure. I dent. Austin altimeter 2904. Maintain 010000. Talking on the radios and receiving air traffic control instructions is one thing that is very difficult for a lot of people when they're learning to fly. That's why, ever since I started to learn how to fly at Austin Bergstrom International Airport and those little Cessna 152s, I got in the habit of writing down air traffic control instructions. Well, a line of moderate precipitation, extending from your 10 o'clock to your 1 o'clock, you'll be in it for about 8 flying miles. Contact Houston Center or Christian, maintain 1 2000, contact Houston Center 134.2. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I write down certain instructions, how I abbreviate things, and just kind of show you how I lay out my own shorthand that I've developed over the years. Visibility, two and a half miles, rain. Sky condition ceiling, 400 broken, 800 overcast. Now, I would like to highlight that this is my way. It may not be your way. There are other ways to do this. This is just what works for me, how I write things down, how I remember them. I just added a new product to my e-store. And by the way, my e-store is live. If you want to grab a hat or a shirt, I've got black and gray shirts. Aviation101.com slash store. I'll throw a card up here somewhere for it. This is one of the new products that I recently added to my e-store. This is a flight notes pad that goes on a knee board. It's made with good quality paper. There's 50 sheets on the pad. It's cardboard back. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go down through each of these sections. And I'm going to show you how I would write down instructions and notes that go in these sections. So the top of the pad here we've got some general flight note information such as the date, the tail number of the airplane, the departure airport, and the destination airport identifiers. So from there on down these are kind of in chronological order as you would encounter them during a flight. So the first one is ATIS. The first thing you do is get the weather. Then you have taxi clearance takeoff. Now I will say that the taxi and the clearance seem to be backwards, but I have a reason for that. Depending on the airport that you're at, you might get the taxi clearance first before you get the IFR clearance or vice versa, it just depends. But I like having the clearance next to the takeoff clearance for a reason, and I'm gonna highlight that here in a minute. Then we have the en route portion, which is just kind of a big block where you could write notes, heading changes, frequency handoffs, altimeter settings, altitude changes, all that good stuff. Then we've got another ATIS section for your destination airport. Your approach instructions or your approach clearance, and then taxi instructions for your destination airport. So starting with the ATIS section, there's a bunch of different types of weather reporting systems when you tune up on a frequency, but we're just gonna deal with one. We're gonna listen to an automated ASOS. So we're gonna dial up the ASOS at Austin Bergstrom Airport, and we're just gonna listen to that, copy it down, and talk about the different types of shorthand techniques that I use to copy the weather. Austin Bergstrom International Airport. Automated weather observation, one niner three zero Zulu. Wind one eight zero at one three. Visibility one zero. Sky condition broken one five thousand. Overcast two five thousand. Temperature two three Celsius. Dew point zero seven Celsius. Altimeter two niner seven eight. Remarks. Density altitude one thousand eight hundred. Okay, so that was the Austin Bergstrom ASOS weather. So we just real quick copied it down here. The time of the weather observation was 1930 Zulu. The wind was 180 at 13 knots. Visibility was 10 statute miles. The lowest cloud layer that it was reporting, which is really what I care about, was at 15,000 broken. So that's flight level 150. That's kind of the format that I wrote it. You can also think of a decimal right here. 15.0 thousand feet broken. The temperature was 23 Celsius. The dew point is 7 Celsius. The altimeter was 2978. And the density altitude was 1800 feet. That's an equal sign. It's kind of hard to read. And this is really the stuff that's the most important. So in an automated AWOS or ASOS, this is pretty much everything you're going to get. But on the long terminal ATIS, you don't need to write necessarily everything down. I generally just write the wind, the ceiling, the temp dew point, and the altimeter. And if I have time and I'm not rushed, I'll jot down the time that it was taken. And then density altitude is pretty important too. All right, next up, we're going to talk about the IFR clearance. And this is the task that a lot of instrument students really dread learning how to do. And I think the reason they dread it is because a lot of students never got in the habit of writing things down during their private training. So we're going to listen to and copy two IFR clearances here. And these bo both of these IFR clearances are from videos that I've made in the past. The first one is going to be IFR from San Marcos up to McKinney, Texas with my buddy Brandon. I was not instrument rated yet. He was my instructor and that was the first instrument flight I ever took. So we're going to listen to the clearance and copy it while we listen to it. And then we're going to talk about the different abbreviations and the different things that I wrote down and why. Listen, 9901, you're McKinney Airport. Yeah, radar vector start. 17. Waco. Peter 3. Jaeger 1 arrival. Maintain 3,000, expect 5,000. 
One zero minutes later. Departure frequency is one one nine point zero four two five two four. Hold for release. Okay, uh, Cessna eight zero nine one cleared to McKinney radar vectors to Dart Victor seventeen Waco Cedar Creek Jaeger one arrival three thousand expect five thousand and ten one one nine or decimal zero to talk two five two four to squawk for eight zero nine nine or one and hold for release. Okay, so this is a pretty good clearance that highlights some examples here. So we are cleared to the the TKI airport, the McKinney airport. That lowercase c is what denotes cleared to. That's how I write it. Cleared to the McKinney airport. Radar vectors to Dart Victor seventeen Waco. Cedar Creek, Jaeger 1 arrival, I just wrote Jaeg 1, climb and maintain 3,000, expect 5,000 in 10 minutes after departure, departure frequency 119.0, squawk, lowercase s, 2524, hold for release. So I use a lowercase c to denote cleared to and then the airport identifier. I use the lowercase r preceding a fix or a departure procedure or anything like that to denote radar vectors, and then Victor 17, Waco, Cedar Creek, Jaeger 1 arrival, and I didn't write out all of Jaeger, just Y-E-A-G, Yeag 1, I know what that means, 3,000, expect 5,000 in 10 minutes, so I just kind of write it as 3 by 5 in 10. This is the format that you're almost always going to get altitudes, you're always going to get an initial altitude, most of the time you're going to going to get an expected altitude that's higher than you're assigned in a given amount of time, and that's just in case you lose radios. So we're initially going to climb and maintain 3,000, we're going to expect 5,000 in 10 minutes after departure, and then departure frequency 119.0, there's nothing else around here that has a decimal, so that's pretty easy to... Uh, to know what that means, and then squawk, lowercase s, 2524, hold for release. Okay, this next clearance is going to be actually a much more recent clearance that I got. I was departing Addison on a rainy afternoon, and I was going to fly down to San Marcos. Nasty IFR the whole way. This one involves a departure procedure, radar vectors, with an as-filed clause in there, and then the rest is pretty routine. So let's go ahead and have a listen to that one, and copy it down, and we'll talk about it. Addison Ground, Skyhawk, 809991, information Oscar, IFR to Hotel Yankee, India. Skyhawk, 809991, Addison Ground, clear to Hotel Yankee, India Airport. Via on departure, fly runway heading. Expect radar vectors, show pull and niner departure, Waco transition as filed, maintain 2,000, expect 4,000, one zero minutes after departure, departure frequency 124.3, squawk 2220. Go to the San Marcos Airport on departure, fly runway heading for the radar, radar vectors for the Joe pull 9, then Waco as filed, come maintain 2,000, expect 4,000 in 10 minutes, departure frequency 124.3, squawk 2220. Nine nine one, read okay, so this one's just a little bit different. We got the same cleared to, we're cleared to the San Marcos Airport via on departure fly runway heading. This is how I denote on departure, and then this is how I denote runway heading. So if you would have said you're clear to the San Marcos Airport via on departure fly heading 360, then I would have wrote ODH360, on departure fly heading 360. In this case, I just said on departure runway heading. Radar vectors, the lowercase r, for the Joe Pool 9 departure, that's just how I abbreviated it, JP9, Waco transition, then as filed. And in the instance of this clearance, what I filed was actually Joe Pool 9 departure, Waco transition, direct Sam Marcus. That's what I filed. So what, what all this means here is when I take off out of Addison, I'm going to fly runway heading, contact departure. They're going to radar vector me for the Joe Pool 9 departure, which will take me to the Waco transition. And then from there, I'm going to proceed on my route as I had filed, which in my case was direct. We're going to climb and maintain 2,000 that's our initial altitude, we are going to expect 4,000 in 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 124 decimal 3, squawk, lowercase s, 2220. All right, so we've copied the weather and we've got our IFR clearance. Now we're ready to taxi. So I'm going to use a couple of examples here. Writing down the taxi instructions is pretty simple. I have a couple of techniques that I use. So I always start by writing the runway number and then to delineate via when they say taxi to 17 via, I just put a little lowercase v after the runway number. And then for each of the taxiways, I just write the, the letter. And then when they say cross a runway or cross a taxiway, I put a lowercase x and then write the runway number. And then when they tell me to hold short of a runway or hold short of a taxiway, I write the taxiway or runway number and circle it. Okay, so we've listened to our weather, we've got our IFR clearance, we're ready to taxi. So we'll use the example that I usually get taxiing from my hangar out of San Marcos when the wind is out of the south. So when they're using runway 17, 
They'll usually say Skyhawk 80991, taxi to runway 17 via Alpha Bravo Charlie Juliet. We're going to cross runway 8 and hold short of runway 13. They'll start the call off with Skyhawk 80991, taxi to runway 17 via Alpha Bravo Charlie Juliet, cross 8, hold short of 13. So they start with the runway that that's going to be our destination. So that's the first thing I write down. I write a V for via. We're gonna taxi to 17 via Alpha Bravo, Charlie and Juliet. We're gonna cross runway eight and we're gonna hold short of runway 13. And we circle the runway that we're gonna hold short of or the taxiway that we're told to hold short of. Whenever we're told to cross a runway, we write a lowercase x and then the runway number for cross runway eight. That way when we're taxiing up to runway eight, all it's gonna take is a glance down to make sure that we are cleared to cross runway eight. And then the circle around 13 kind of gets our attention and says, hey, hold short of runway 13. So that's taxi to runway 17 via Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Juliet, cross runway 8, hold short of 13. There's only a couple of things we want to write in the takeoff section. I always write the time that I am departing, and I write it in Zulu time, so I write it in the format of hour, hour, minute, minute, followed by a lowercase z. And usually, especially when you're IFR or coming out of a, you know, a Bravo airport, a Charlie airport, you're gonna get an initial heading. So they might say Cessna 80991 on departure fly runway heading, runway 13 clear for takeoff. Or if they say 80991 fly heading 360 runway 13 clear for takeoff, I write H360 to delineate a heading. So let's look at a quick example of that. Now the takeoff clearance is pretty simple. We really don't need to write anything down there. It's it's cleared for takeoff on runway X. There's usually not anything we need to write down, but something, but the two things that I like to write down is the time off, so the takeoff time, and then the initial heading or the, the initial lateral instruction. And then right here is where I'm gonna show you why I like to have the clearance right next to the takeoff clearance. So tower might say Skyhawk 80991 on departure, fly heading 360, runway 13, clear for takeoff. And this is how I would write that. I would say heading 360, and then read it back. Heading 360, runway 13, clear for takeoff, Skyhawk 80991. And then before I let go of the brakes, I'd come here on my, on my watch, Look at the Zulu time here, 1950 UTC. So we're gonna write down 1950 Zulu. Another instance is they could say Skyhawk A0991 fly runway heading, runway 13 clear for takeoff. That's all I would write and then I would read it back. Runway heading, runway 13 clear for takeoff, Skyhawk A0991. And then before I let go of the brakes, I'd come to my watch, 1950 Zulu, 1950 Zulu. Let go of the brakes. Start rolling, get onto the runway, execute the takeoff. When I'm IFR, I like to simplify my life by thinking of it in terms of my horizontal instruction and my vertical instruction. Which direction do I need to point the airplane and how high do I need to be? Do I need to be climbing? Do I need to be descending? If so, to what altitude? Right here is real simple. When I take off, my vertical instruction is right here. My horizontal instruction is right here. They're right next to each other. So when we're off the runway and we're real busy managing the airplane, we're starting to get into the clouds, my life is easy. This is all I've got to do. We're climbing up to 2000, that's my vertical instruction, and we're gonna fly runway heading, that's my horizontal instruction. Now, in the instance of the clearance here out of Addison, clear to the Hotel Yankee Indy Airport, on departure, fly runway heading. They would just say Skyhawk 80991, runway 15, clear for takeoff. They didn't give me any lateral instructions because it's right there. On departure, fly runway heading. So that is my vertical and horizontal instruction in the case of this clearance. So in the case of this clearance where I'm given my on departure horizontal instruction, and then of course I'm given my initial vertical instruction, climb maintain 2000, all I would do is write, the, write down the time when I'm clear for takeoff. So onto the en route section of this notepad. This is where it's kind of loosey goosey as to what you wanna write down. It just depends on, you know, maybe the equipment. Usually if I have a heading bug, in the airplane, I don't write down my heading instructions because the heading bug is what I use there. But if I've got a free hand or I've got an extra second, I'll still write it down. But the main things I write down is handoffs, heading, altitude, and navigational instructions. That's pretty much the bulk of everything you're gonna get during cruise, except for maybe an altimeter setting here and there. So let's go ahead and look at some examples of how I would write down different instructions while en route. So we'll start with like a handoff, for example. If if I'm fly, you know, flying along at cruise and ATC says, Scott, 80991, contact Houston Center 134.2. All I'm going to do is write 134.2. And I'm going to read that back. 134.2, Scott, 80991, good day. And let's say I check on with Houston Center. I say Houston Center 80991, level 4000, you know, given my altitude. I'll come back and say, Scott, 80991, Roger, junction altimeter is 29992. All I would do is write altimeter 2992. And I'd read that back, altimeter 2992, no, 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 I write the uppercase A right there to denote that this is an altimeter setting. If they say Skyhawk 80991, turn left heading 330, I'm gonna come here, write 
H330 for heading 330. And then I would reply, 330 on the heading, 80991. So I said, Cock 80991, turn right heading 010, I'm gonna write heading 010. Now, if they give me a degree relative to the current heading that I'm on, such as Scock A0991 vectors for traffic, turn right 10 degrees, right 10 degrees. I'm gonna come down here and write an R. 10, right 10 degrees. That way I know this is a relative vector, relative to my previous heading. That's the difference between writing an H or an L and an R. So then if they say Scock 80991, there's a moderate precipitation at your 12 to one o'clock for vectors around that, turn left 20, left two zero degrees. I'm gonna say left two zero, left 20. And I'll say left 20 degrees, Scock 80991. I'm putting along and they say Scock 80991, clear direct dart. I'm gonna come down here, write a, a D with an arrow through it and write DART. Direct DART, Skyhawk 80991. This is kind of like a running log of all the little instructions I've gotten throughout the flight. They might say Skyhawk 80991, climb and maintain 12,000. I'm gonna do that with an up arrow. I'll put an up arrow with a 12.0, or usually if there's no hundreds associated with it, it's just 12,000 flat. I'll just write, that was an awful up arrow. I'll write an up arrow with a 12 up to 12,000. They might say Skyhawk 80991, descend and maintain 7,500. I'm gonna write a down arrow 7.5. Now for the flight levels, if they say Skyhawk 80991, climb and maintain flight level 180, I'm gonna do an up arrow 180 because that's how we say it. We don't say flight level 120 in the United States. We don't say flight level 075, but we do say flight level 180 because in, in the United States, that's where our flight levels start. Skyhawk 80991, climb and maintain flight level 270 up arrow 270. Now when we're VFR, we may get little altitude restrictions like at or above this, at or below this. If they say Skyhawk 80991, maintain at or above 3,500. I'm gonna write 3.5 with a line underneath it. That shows me that there is a hard deck. There's a hard limit right below 3,500 that I cannot go below. I cannot go below 3,500. That's what that means. They might say Skyhawk 80991, maintain at or below 1 to 12,500. So I'm gonna write 12.5 with a line right above it. That means there is a hard deck, there's a hard limit right above 12,500 feet that I cannot go above. That's how I like to write these little altitude restrictions, climb and maintain, descend and maintain, clear direct this, fly this heading, left 10, left 20, right 20, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we got three more sections down at the bottom of the notepad, but we're only gonna talk about one of them because we've already talked about ATIS and taxi and the last two ATIS and taxis have to do with your destination airport, nothing different there. So lastly, we're gonna talk about the approach section of this notepad, particularly with instrument approaches. When we're briefing an instrument approach, we wanna write down important altitudes, including our decision altitude and minimum descent altitude. So if I'm briefing the ILS into San Marcos or something like that, I'd write it like this. So our our initial approach fix, we're gonna be at or above 3,200. At our final approach fix, or the FAF, we're gonna be at or above 2,700 feet. Remember the underline, so this is a hard deck, we can't go below that. And then on the straight in ILS, our decision altitude is 793 feet. Okay, so for an approach clearance, we've got four elements, and it's known as PTAC. The first guy is position, second guy here is turn, then we have altitude, and we have clearance. Hopefully you can read my handwriting. PTAC, position, turn, altitude, and clearance. Now for example, on the ILS-13 coming into San Marcos, the clearance will sound something like 80991, you're three miles from Gary's, Turn left heading 160, maintain 3000 till established, cleared for the ILS 13 San Marcos. Position, you're three miles from Gary's, turn, left heading 160, altitude, maintain 3000 until established, clearance, cleared for the ILS 13. This is how I would write it down. Cessna 80991, you're three miles from Gary's, turn left heading 160, maintain 3000 till established, cleared for the ILS 13 into San Marcos. I don't need to read back the position, but I do need to read back the heading, altitude, and clearance. And I would read it back just like this. Heading 160, 3000 until established, cleared for the ILS 13 San Marcos, not another one. Now, if we're doing a GPS approach, GPS meaning we have equipment on board to tell us exactly where we are, the controller usually is not going to fuss themselves with telling us our position. And unless we're being vectored for an approach, Approach, they're probably not going to give us a heading either. So let's say 
they cleared us direct a wall. And that's the initial approach fix for the RNAV 15 and the Lago Vista here around Austin. So we're putting along direct a wall. Well, when they're ready to give us the clearance, they don't need to give us a position because we have a GPS, we know our position. And they don't need to give us a turn because we already know where we're going. We're going direct a wall. And the GPS is guiding us directly there. So they don't need, they don't need to tell us where we are. And they don't need to tell us where to go. We know where we're going. But what they do need to give us is an altitude and a clearance. So what they might say is, Skyhawk 80991 cross AWALT at 4,100 feet. You're cleared for the RNAV 15 Laga Vista. Report the procedure turn inbound. So let's see how we'd write this on the actual notepad. So we're putting along, they, and then they, they're ready to give us a clearance. Skyhawk 80991 cross AWALT at 4,100 feet. You're clear for the RNAV 15. Report the procedure turn inbound. So I'd read it back just like this. We'll cross AWALT at 4,100 feet, cleared for the RNAV 15, report inbound 80991. So we can see in that instance, they gave us the altitude and clearance, but they didn't give us a position or a turn because it wasn't needed. But all approach clearances, for the most part, follow this structure. As always, I hope you found this video helpful. I like to share the little tidbits that I've learned over the years. And with making a video like this, I hope to draw feedback from the audience and learn a little bit extra myself. Somebody out there may have a better way to do it than I do. So if you found this video helpful and you found the notepad to be helpful, you can head over to my e-store, aviation101.com slash store and pick one up for yourself. Don't forget to grab a hat and a shirt while you're there. If you like this video, definitely give it a like and subscribe if you have not yet. And share this video if you know somebody who could benefit from it. As always, I want you to keep learning, stay happy, stay healthy, stay current, and stay proficient. We'll see you on the next one.